your expectations are too high. I'm not saying that, actually, but Bethesda is, or at least one of the veterans from Bethesda is. You're expecting too much out of video games. That's a strange position to take, and I'm not sure I agree. We're going to jump in on this story coming to us from Bounding Into Comics. It is from our good friend, Jorge Arenas, and it's titled, Bethesda Veteran Warns That Fan Expectations for Elder Scrolls VI Are Almost Impossible to Meet Despite a Decade of Development. Wow. That's an attempt to set the bar really low. With as long as it's taken for ES6 to come out, this situation has been a meme for some time now. In fact, it's been a series of memes, to be fair. And with that said, many are filled with anticipation for the Elder Scrolls VI game. Me? Not so much. The thing is, though, according to a key insider, the high expectations for the game might be too much to meet. And if Starfield and other releases can be seen as a hint, Bethesda might be in trouble. And let me up the stakes there. Bethesda is definitely in trouble. And it didn't help that Microsoft came along and swiped them up. Bethesda's got a problem. A big one. And they've had massive releases. They've been very successful. Of course, you had Skyrim and Fallout. Both of those became long-standing fan favorites. And it's understandable that the company has a lot riding on its next major RPG, which is what they're known for. And former Bethesda lead designer Bruce Naismith believes it will be almost impossible for the game to satisfy every fan. I don't know why. Doesn't seem that difficult to do, but maybe I'm wrong. In an interview with Kiwi Talks, Nesmith shared his thoughts on the challenges Bethesda faces with Elder Scrolls VI. Elder Scrolls VI is undoubtedly going to be an amazing game, but it's going to be compared to all the previous games Bethesda made. He drew a direct comparison to the studio's other titles, such as Fallout 4, Fallout 76, which was garbage, and the recent Starfield, also less than impressive, in my opinion. Noting that these games face similar struggles due to fans' sky-high expectations. Sky-high? No, just meet the bar that you met on the previous game, and maybe up it a little bit in visual quality, and perhaps try and aim for fewer bugs for a change, Bethesda. Those are the things that we want. And of course, all the marketing spin is where we're starting. One of the reasons people come out and talk like this is they're trying to lower your expectations or manage them. And in this case, Nesmith emphasized that one major challenge for game developers is setting unrealistic or setting realistic, I should say, expectations. Given Bethesda's legacy, managing fan expectations for Elder Scrolls VI is essential. You know, the 30-year-old who is making a piece of art, who is a professional artist, he can, can't control the expectation because he's got all this history. It's there whether he likes it or not, Nesmith said, pointing out the burden that past successes places on future projects. Is it really a burden, though? Or is it just the bar you have to meet? It doesn't seem like that's a challenge. You always want to best yourself. I mean, that's natural, isn't it? At least for most people. The same he believes applies to fans awaiting a game's release, adding that their expectations are almost impossible to meet, which I don't agree. Just give me the best possible game I can imagine, which in most cases you usually do. Although with Bethesda, it's usually riddled with bugs that oftentimes have to be fixed by their player base. And in the past, Bethesda's track record of delivering immersive world-building RPG experiences has created a loyal and passionate fan base. Well, they have to be because they're willing to fix your games for you. However, this also means that any minor misstep can lead to harsh criticism, of course, which was seen with Fallout 76 and Starfield over the last few years. Again, of course. Nesmith referenced how Bethesda's marketing team often grapples with this pressure to be able to downplay that the game may not be equal to previous iterations, highlighting that if it isn't perfect, it just doesn't get a 95 plus on Metacritic, which can lead the game to be labeled a failure, which again, you're going to have to suck up and deal with. And here's something I can agree with. A long wait builds pressure. Of course it does. 
you've made people wait too long between games. Just like Rockstar has made their fans wait too long for GTA 6. They almost waited far too long for Red Dead Redemption 2. Unrealistic expectations are created out of the fact that technology has evolved and beautiful games have been created since. So you're definitely going to be compared to those, which I guess they're starting to find uncomfortable. Anyway, it's no secret that Elder Scrolls 6 has been in the works for a long time. The game was officially announced back in 2018 with a short teaser trailer. Bethesda's Todd Howard revealed it during a time when fans were demanding updates. Torches and pitchforks were out, Howard admitted, with players eager for news on the next installment of the franchise. Well, yeah, they were waiting and waiting and waiting. But with every year that passes, the pressure on Bethesda to deliver increases. Fans have waited over a decade for a follow-up to Skyrim. This waiting for the next installment of Elder Scrolls franchise has turned into a kind of meme. This is because the time between Elder Scrolls 4 Oblivion and Elder Scrolls 5 Skyrim, which I thought was pretty good, was only four years. Some fans have created memes to address their frustrations, as I mentioned before. Many, many, many memes. To date, however, fans have been waiting about double the amount of time as Skyrim came out in 2011, and so far the company has stated that the game is slated for early 2026 release, making it a staggering 15 years between games. So, here's another meme. At least this is offered up by Bounding Into Comics. It's pretty funny. The article goes on to describe what the future of Elder Scrolls is and how much more we're going to have to wait. And just remember, Bethesda's always fighting bugs. So unless they have a new policy to not release anything until all the bugs are solved, I have a feeling that this could get delayed even more. Because I don't believe anybody's truly been focused on this since the disaster of Fallout 76 and all of the huge number of patches of huge size had to be laid down to make that game even playable. And I have to tell you, that was the last game that I actually purchased for pre-sale because it was so disappointing and I really didn't get that bag that I ordered either. I'm still mad at you right now, Bethesda. Ultimately, when it comes to gaming, you have to ask yourself a series of questions. How close is this game going to be to my expectations? Will this be a bomb? Will this have too many glitches? Is it going to keep consistent with the lore and themes, which when it comes to Skyrim, there are thousands of books that you've read throughout this franchise that could be broken just by the way they present this game and probably will be since nobody there is going to care about lore anymore. They don't like looking back at their own history and being held to it. They want to create new things without those boundaries, which means that they aren't creative at all. There's an easy world to live in here. They just can't seem to find it. And finally, you have to ask, is this worth a pre-purchase? Are you going to advance order it? And you've already heard my opinion on it. Absolutely not. I don't think I'll ever pre-order a game ever again. And that's saying something. So with all that you've heard here today, I ask you, are you interested in waiting for Elder Scrolls? Do you think it's been too long? And do you think that you have to lower your expectations in order to enjoy games that have had such a long waiting period? Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. And if you think about anything else, add them there as well. And while you're looking down there, hit the thumbs up button, share the video around there, and double check that you're still subscribed. YouTube's been unsubscribing people lately, and one of the ways you can prevent that from happening in the future is to watch one of my videos and then another one of my videos. Why? Well, algorithmically, it helps me out a lot. And for the second reason, it actually forces them into your feed, which means you won't miss anything. You know what else makes it so you don't miss anything? The little bell icon down, down there is the notifications bell. Turn on all notifications and you should be good to go, which means you won't miss a live stream, a video, or anything else special that's happening on the channel because you'll be plugged into the community tab. And 
for a little bit more community, you can certainly become a member as well. Quick reminder though, because I haven't done this in a while, I do have my own merchandise site, but it's not all oriented around pop culture. No, as a matter of fact, beachpunk.com actually has great gear like this rooster tiki and t-shirts and shoes and all kinds of lovely things, including bags. So ladies, if you want shoes and bags and other cute things, we've got you covered. Water bottles, towels, etc., etc. Anything you can imagine we're working on right now, or we already have with new designs coming all the time. Some fresh ones coming for the San Antonio meetup coming here really soon. Holy cow. Get towards the end of October. On that note, be sure to take care of yourself, take care of others, and until next time, see ya.